Go to Jesus. We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, you're going to stand up at this moment. In Job. The Old Testament. Job 19. Job 19, verse 25. Job 19, verse 25. The word of the Lord says the following. For I know that my Redeemer leaves and he shall stand at last on the earth. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful because we have enjoyed our fellowship. We ask that we may bless your people in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The Bible. Can you lower the volume a little bit? I think it's uh, still a little bit loud for me. The Bible. It describes. Uh, it speaks about Job, a, sh man, a straight man, a sincere man, faithful, fearing the Lord, and that had gone, went uh, apart from evil. And the Bible says, my brethren, and everybody knows regarding the life of Job, that he went through a moment, a period of affliction and loss and great suffering. And the concern of Job, in spite of being uh, uh, fearing a man that was fearing the Lord, sincere, and that would always go astray from evil, that he says, and it speaks in a couple of verses below this one that the root of the accusation was in him. The root of the accusation is lays in me. So he understood and he noticed that through his actions he would not be justified before the Lord. And the concern of Job now what was with his departure from the earth. With, he was worried about his own death. Because Job knew that man's time is just uh, it's very fleeting. And he knew that a man that was born out of a woman, and he writes himself about that, that it's just a few days, and those days are filled with um, disconcerting things. And he knew that his days are numbered, have been already determined, and that God knows the number of his months. And he, in other words, that his life, his life was on the hands of the one who had created him and the one who had formed him. And he didn't know when he was going to depart, but he was sure that at any moment he could, he could depart and he could stop existing. And there comes a moment in the life of Job that he questions God. He says, if man dies, will he uh, be alive again in the days of Job? It was not possible to find an answer to that question. 
But Job, he says, uh, is the text that we just read a couple seconds ago, for I know that my Redeemer lives, and in the day in which the Redeemer of Job's soul and the Redeemer of our own souls was born as a man, born out of a woman, of also uh, just a few days, a few months. This man that was born out of a man, of a, or out of a woman, of just a few days, a few years, gives answers to Job. That Job had asked many a long time ago in the past. In the resurrection of Lazarus, Jesus answers to Job. Jesus comes and says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if that person is dead, will live again. So Job was seeking this Redeemer. He says the following, my brethren. I know that there is a witness in heaven, somebody that paid my death in the highest. But Job didn't know this witness in heaven, this attorney in heaven. This person that had paid his death. Uh, the, what is the person that the person that pays your death? Uh, he knew that the person his death was great. And all the possessions that he had that he had that he possessed once would not be able to pay for his death. So he asked someone to be responsible for his for him to pay for his death in his place. He was referring to this this redeemer. To this one that had the power of resurrect the dead. Because in Isaiah 53, he speaks about him. He took, he took upon himself our pain. This, the punishment that, that brings peace was upon him. So he was the witness that was he was seeking. This person that was paying his death, that he was after. Somebody that could pay his death. Somebody that could uh, blot out completely all his transgressions because he says that the root of his accusations was in himself because he was not just or perfect before the Lord. So he, he was seeking a resource, he sought uh, help because redeem, uh, the Redeemer means the one who deliver you from a, a death or a slavery, like we just sang uh, here, when Moses, he speaks to Pharaoh, he says, let my people go. Moses was typified the deliverer, the one that, who had taken the people of God of a life of slavery to guide them towards a place where flows honey and milk, the promised land the land of promise that the Lord had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Moses had already died. And Job said the following, I know that my Redeemer lives. So in other words, I know that my Redeemer lives. Jesus is alive, blessed be the name of the Lord. So the hope of Job was on this Redeemer. He was on this person that could redeem, rescue him that could help him. And most importantly, to help him uh, at the point of death. Because the concern of Job was with his physical life at that moment. He was worried about his soul. If man dies, will he be born again? Become alive again? So Job says that my Redeemer leaves. But Job didn't know the Lord. The Bible says that he had only heard about 
God. But faith is exactly this. Faith is not seen in order to believe. That's not faith. That's, this is superstition. Faith is to believe in order to be able to see. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. So he believed in a God that he heard about. He knew, he had believed in a God that was going to be his redeemer. He is going to be his rescuer. He is going to be his savior, his deliverer. A God that was going to bring him back to life. And that was going to give him a life, not this life that we know here, because we don't have life. We have a breath of life. That's why we die. That's what Job said. Your, our days are numbered. Our months are numbered. The day we're born, we're born counting our days towards death. And many times we are not worried about it. Where we're going to end up after death. And the main role of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is exactly this. To deliver man from eternal death deliver man from the eternal condemnation and that's what Job wanted he wanted this deliverance that's what Job was seeking and he said I know that my Redeemer leaves so the hope of Job was exactly this of knowing he is Redeemer to know his rescuer to know who was going to pay his death. And at the end of the book of Job, he said, before I knew you up to of hearing about, but now my eyes has seen you. Do you remember Bartimaeus? When Bartimaeus saw Jesus, you know what he saw? You, what did Bartimaeus saw when he saw Jesus? What did he say? He saw the Redeemer. He saw the Savior. When he looks to Jesus, he says, Your faith, Bartimaeus, has saved you. And the same thing happened to Job. He knew God about, uh, from here about, he believed, and now he saw. Now my eyes see you. Now I'm saved. Salvation is a meeting with the Creator. Salvation is a meeting with the Lord Jesus. Is to see the Lord. I saw the Lord in, in a high and sublime throne. There in Revelation 3, after those things, I heard a voice that said, Come up here and I will show you the things that are about to happen. So he saw. I know, for I know that my Redeemer leaves. And later on he says something else that it is important for us tonight. You know what he said? That at the end, the end, because he's the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. And how about the land? He speaks about a land. Everything that God has created, all the creative work of God was created to exist for a determined period of time. That's why the Bible says, and then the end will come. But the end for Job, we can say it's, it's not really an end. The end for the church is not really an end. The death for us is not the end. The mort for us is, is a new life, uh, a new beginning. That's why Job was interested about knowing his Creator, his Redeemer, his Redeemer, his Rescuer, his Savior. I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. And he was speaking at this moment, you know what he was speaking about? 
and he was speaking about what something that we are about to see the rapture of the church and there in Thessalonians Paul says the following for the same Lord the Lord of Job the Redeemer the Rescuer the Savior will come down from heaven with a loud noise with a voice of archangel with trumpet of God and who the ones who died in Christ will resurrect first blessed be the name of the Lord that's the hope of the church in, in knowing that the Lord will come down from heaven with a loud sound with the voice of archangel and with the trumpet of God and at any moment the fourth trumpet trumpet will sound and will be taken to be with the Lord in his eternity and the, the ones who died in Christ die my brethren everybody will die glory to God for this because if we don't die we're not going to go beyond this place do you want to stay here if I'm going to a bad place it's better to stay here but the promise of the Lord that it is a much better place revelations and I John saw a new heaven a new earth I saw the river of life the tree of life that there will be no death or tears or pleading or pain because those things have passed and the evil no longer exists and I've seen the holy city dressed up like a bride for his for her groom and that's the blessing that the Lord has prepared for you for each one of us and today you have the, you can have this hope and much more much more than that that our Redeemer lives that Jesus is alive and at, for last at last he'll stand up and take a stand and will take those who died with him and those who are still alive will be transformed and will live forever with the Lord that's the hope of Job that's our hope for I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth blessed be the name of the Lord the Lord has shown a woman and she came here anguished even emotionally unstable because she remember uh, a family member a father who died a while ago and she is anguished with this but the Lord has shown tonight that he God the Father the Creator her Redeemer her Rescuer he has eternal life to give you and yes there is life after this life if you died with Christ you will resurrect and you will live forever throughout eternity the Lord has shown a man this man came asking for help because you know he's going to die of course everybody's going to die today his concern is with his salvation and his heart is filled with sadness and anguish but tonight the Lord is speaking to this man that is going to bring salvation and joy for his soul because salvation my brethren you know what it is is to feel a great happiness when we have salvation we have happiness and we are sure that one day we'll be with the Lord in eternity I know and uh, you need to live this place knowing this that our your Redeemer lives he is alive and at the end he will stand upon the face of the earth amen
stand up we praise the Lord we're thankful because you are a deliverer you are a savior you are the Christ that has redeemed our lives has prepared us, us to enter into our eternity we praise you for the resurrection for the eternal life that you have prepared for each one of us we plead Lord so that you may continue to operate in our midst save, heal, deliver, remove anguish, pain, death, and suffering, and adding to the life of each one the hope, Lord, of one day to be with you in your eternity. Take us home in peace for our homes and under your protection, we pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our Sabbath has come to its end. I'd like to invite you, my brother and sister who entered here tonight. You are welcome to this place. We have service every Tuesday and, and Thursdays, every always at 8, 8 p.m. and Saturday at 7.30. And Sunday morning, we have our Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. And also on Saturdays at 6 of the after, afternoon, we have a meeting with the women here in this place. And you are all invited. If you need a prayer for our life regarding the word of the gifts, the give, spiritual gifts, raise your hand so that we may identify you and you give you the proper assistance. I'd like to remind the church as well that during this week is the week for us to invite our neighbors to participate on the services with us, and especially the service this Saturday and Sunday.